You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. Check it out. Vegan mince and dumplings. Good old Northern English peasant food, this. And I'm a bit of a Northern English peasant, so this suits me down to the ground. And I'm not lying when I say it's pretty easy, and it tastes just like the real thing. So let's get on with it, eh? And I'm using green lentils as the base for the mince in this recipe. You could use fake mince like, but I prefer real food to be honest. And I've added a good pinch of baking soda to these lentils. A quarter of a teaspoon is enough, so don't overdo it. And I have one and a half litres of water in a big jug here. And I'm going to put around a third of that in this pan. And the baking soda that I've put in there will help to soften these lentils up a little bit. If we were to just go in with salt straight away, that might toughen up your lentils and they would stay hard on the outside. So to avoid that, we'll just give these lentils a gentle simmer for a few minutes to break the back of them. We don't want to overdo the cooking at this stage though. The baking soda will reduce the time we need to cook these, and I just want to get the softening process underway before we add any salt to them, you know. And make sure you give it a good stir, and you can use this opportunity to check that there aren't any bits of lentil plant that made it into your lentils without asking, because that can happen. And once these green lentils have had a few minutes of gentle simmering, I reckon we've broken their resolve. So let's get the rest of the water into the pan now and we can start making this interesting. Because we're going to start building up the flavours with a chopped medium carrot. And let's get two whole cloves of garlic in there. And a medium onion chopped in two. And a sprig of fresh parsley if you've got some. Three mushrooms and that's about 50 grams. And here's our salt coming in now, one teaspoon along with a tablespoon of soy sauce and we're trying to get as much flavour into this pan as we can and you can play about with this stock to suit your tastes with different herbs and spices if you don't trust me and I'm finishing up with a couple or three or four dried bay leaves so let's get the lid on and cook this and green lentils can take around 30 to 40 minutes to cook but that baking soda will reduce the cooking time a little so you do want to keep an eye on them and check the texture from time to time and keep giving them the odd stir but to be honest, you can go to watch the telly for 10 minutes at this point if you like. But if you want to keep busy, you can prep the base ingredients for this meaty vegan lentil stew we're making. So a bit of oil in a pan, medium heat, and I'm going to chop a medium onion finely, because that's a good way to start any stew really, I suppose. And I tell you what, once that's in there, let's get another medium carrot. And I'm going to grate that here, and that's going to go in our pan and fry away for a bit with the onion. And I am still keeping an eye on my lentils here because I do want them to have a little bit of bite left to them before I move on to the next stage of this recipe. So I want to be really careful not to overcook them. But anyway, never mind that for now because I'm going in with three more mushrooms here and that's about 50 grams. And as you can see, if you're still watching, I'm finally chopping them here, but you can cut them how you like. And I'll be seasoning this now just as if this was mince I was using. And this will end up tasting just like a meat stew, which still amazes me, even though I've made this loads. So I'm going to start with two cloves of minced garlic and let's get that incorporated a bit before we go in with the rest of our seasoning. So let's start off with a teaspoon of salt and around a third of a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of dried oregano and a teaspoon of dried thyme, a good pinch of nutmeg, a teaspoon of mustard, a heaped teaspoon of tomato puree, and finally, another tablespoon of soy sauce, and that is all we need in here for now, in preparation for chucking our lentils in. But first, I've got a lovely surprise for you, because we're going to make some gravy for this. And now our lentils are cooked to perfection, we can bring them in here. And you may have wondered why I put so much water into these lentils at the beginning, and now you know. Because we're going to take around 500 millilitres of the liquid out of here now, and pour it through a sieve into a little jug. And then he flots them and jets them, can go back in our pan with the rest of the lentils there. And let's just put that gravy to one side for now and take the veg out of our lentils. And you want to keep that. And don't forget to take the bay leaves out at this point and discard them. So here, let's get these lentils into our pan with the other veggies and seasoning and stuff. And give it a good stir to mix it all in. And the only thing left to do with our stew now is to add some fat. And I'm going in with around 75 grams of refined coconut oil here. And refined coconut oil doesn't taste of coconut, so don't panic. And our epic vegan gravy needs a little bit of pimping up now. 
Let's get those veggies in that we saved into our lentil liquid that we saved. Here we're right, save us, aren't we? And blend it all up. And when you do this, don't be as daft as a brush like me and use a tiny jug for this. I'm surprised I didn't splatter the whole of my kitchen doing this. I have done it before, like, but I never learn. And if you've still got some gravy left in your thimble-sized jug, you might want to check for seasoning. And I added a bit of salt and pepper to suit my taste. But whatever you do, you need to give it a good whisk up and then sieve it into a frying pan like this. And that veggie pulp might need a bit of a helping hand to go through this sieve here. So I recruited my whisk to help me out, but he could only take me so far with this. So I had to get the pastry scraper in to get it all through. And I did get into a bit of a mess here doing this. But don't worry, I did pull myself together pretty quickly. And that veggie pulp will help to thicken this gravy. But if it's not thick enough for you, you can always add a little bit of cornstarch. And I'm going in with two teaspoons of cornstarch here. And when that's in there, you want to cook it on a medium high heat. Whisking or stirring all the time until the gravy is bubbling. And then you know it's cooked the cornstarch there and it's all done. And if you're a wrong un and you like really thin gravy, just leave the cornstarch out at this point. And an optional knob of refined coconut oil will give this gravy a dead authentic mouthfeel, so I would recommend it like. And I'd also recommend doing my roasties with this, so let's run through this roasty recipe really quickly for you, so don't go anywhere. So we've chopped some floury potatoes, nice and chunky, and we're going to need a generous couple of pinches of salt in our water before simmering these for around 10 minutes. And the quality of your roasties depends more on the type of potatoes you use than anything else. Cooking them in salted water for a bit and then roughing them up a bit always helps like. But you do need floury potatoes here ideally. And now that I've given those potatoes a good shuggy in the colander, they're ready to go on a baking tray and they need to cool down fully. And I can assure you that shuggy is a real word. But whether you believe me or not, you better believe that you need to separate these roasties now because you don't want them sticking together. And when they've cooled fully, and only when they've cooled fully, you can get a load of oil on, get in there with our oil and our hands and our oily hands, and coat these roasties really well before cracking them in our oven at 200 Celsius fan setting, and they'll need about an hour. And we're going to do our dumplings now, the roasties are in. So let's get 150 grams of all-purpose flour in a bowl, along with around half a teaspoon of salt. And why not go in with a half a teaspoon of dried thyme and a half a teaspoon of dried oregano, along with one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And then we'll stir those dry ingredients up. And traditionally, these dumplings would be made with dried suet, which is the fat from around a cow's kidneys. But we're not going to rip a cow's kidneys out of here, because we're going to use refined coconut oil again. And we need to grate 75 grams of that onto our plate. And I did have this in the freezer to make it easier for me. The coconut oil, not the plate. And I'm making enough dumplings here to feed four people with enormous appetites. So now that that's done, let's tip it into our dry ingredients. And these dumplings do taste just like the real thing. And if you're sceptical, I don't blame you. I was amazed myself. But I don't think I'll ever go back to using suet for my dumplings anymore. Now I've tried this, and you can quote me on that. Anyway, I'm just looking through this now to check that there's no big lumps of coconut oil. And you do only need to stir here. You don't need to rub it in like it's a biscuit mix or a scone mix or anything like that. And you do need ice cold water as well. So I'm going in with about 50 milliliters here. And you have to be careful not to add too much water to this. So take it easy at first and stir it together at first rather than going in straight away with your hands because it will be a bit sticky in there. But you can eventually give it a little knead to bring it together. And you will probably need a tad more water here. But go in a bit at a time so you don't overdo it. Because if this mix is too sticky and wet, I find that the dumplings take on too much moisture when they're baking in the stew. It seems to be more of a problem with coconut oil rather than using suet. But it's all okay if you make sure this dumpling mix is a little on the dry side. But we still don't want it to be dry as sticks or dry as snuff. So give it a bit of a squeeze and you don't want to see it cracking too much. But a few cracks are alright. And if it's still a little bit sticky at this point, add a bit more flour because we want to be edging more to the dry side rather than the sticky wet side. And once it's all tickety-boo, we can go ahead and break this dough into 16 pieces. And I'm not being particularly scientific, are you? I'm just tearing this dough in half, in half again, in half again, and then in half again to make 16 little dumplings. And let's roll all these up into smooth little balls now. And I like this bit because it reminds me of playing with plasticine when I was a kid, and it means that we're almost finished 
and will be noshing some soft, pillowy, meaty dumplings at some point very soon. And these little dumplings have been through a lot, so let's put them on a plate for ten minutes to have a little bit of a rest, and let the gluten in the flour relax, but to be honest, if I'm in a hurry, I usually swerve this stage. And you'll need a large, oven-proof dish for this next step now, because we're going to put our lentil concoction into it, and your stew must be hot at this point. Our oven is already on at 200 degrees Celsius fan setting as well, because our roasties are cooking away in there, and that's a relief because immediate heat is the key to get the best rise out of your dumplings here. And it is okay if your lentils do have a little bit of a bite still at this stage, because they are going to cook now for another half an hour or so. So let's get these rested dumplings in this boiling hot stew, and space them out well to allow for the puffing up. Because they are going to puff up nice these. And it would be great if this oven dish of mine here had a tight fitting lid, but in the absence of effective and premium quality kitchen equipment, I'm just going to put foil on the top of this, and I'm making sure that it's tightly fitted. And first off, I'm going to bake these in my oven for about 20 minutes. And I wouldn't normally take them out of the oven after 20 minutes, but I do want to show you what they look like at this point, but not with this blurry camera shot here. Let me, uh, let me just adjust this now and get it nice and pin sharp. Ah, that's a bit better. And you can already see how much they've puffed up at this point, 20 minutes in. And let's have a good close-up to prove that I'm not lying to you. And these are cooked now, and you can eat them like this if you like. But I like to put them back in the oven and put the grill on and crisp these up on top and brown them properly. And that does take a little bit longer with coconut oil dumplings rather than using suet. And I think they look pretty good there, like. Let's have a good close-up. They're crispy and dry on top and soft and comforting inside and underneath in that meaty vegan stew. And I'm just going to make a bit of leek mash to go with these. So let's get a load of finely chopped leek in this pan with some olive oil. And we're going to sweat this down now for about 10 to 15 minutes on a low heat with a good pinch of salt in there for good measure. And the leek will soften nicely and the slow cooking process will bring out a bit of the leek's natural sweetness and creaminess. And we'll definitely need some potatoes to add this leek to or we won't have leek mash, will we? We'll just have some leek. And there's nothing complicated about this, because we just hoi our leek in our mash. Get another good glug of olive oil in there, and you can add a bit of plant milk too if you like. And stir it up and it's done. And I have to say, I've really pushed the boat out here with this meal, and I've used a billion pans and trays, but it's definitely worth it, like. And our roasties are done now. And I'm going to toss these in the oil before taking them off this tray. And I'll tell you what, let me give you a little close-up of these, because they're crispy crunchy as these are, you know. And I do believe that I am done and ready to serve this up now. So let's get it on a plate, and I'm going to eat all of this now, and then have a bath with my whippet in my steel bath in my front room in front of the fire, with my flat cap on. See you after, eh? Terra.